What's going on guys, KG here from the Football Capital and it's another A-League review show and I've got Lockie from Curse Watch Football. Lockie, welcome to the show, mate. I'm back, I'm back, man. And uh, again, it's as we keep saying each week, it keeps heating up. Uh, the, the ladders are shifting and, 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 and you know, places swapping and changing around. But uh, yeah, good to be back and uh, keen to chat A-League. And it's hot. It's hot for the Central Coast yeah. Mariners, and and again, putting lines through a few teams that you know not gonna not gonna make it, but we're gonna cover it in the show. And you know, I know there's a few teams that obviously didn't play this weekend because of um, the ACL commitments. Mm. Um, so we didn't really see anything from a Melbourne City or a Sydney perspective. But they've banked the games in hand, and like you said, it is heating up. The ladder's finding its shape, so it's gonna be an interest, interesting one. Um, with about three games left for for most teams, it's it's definitely going to heat up. And um, you know what? We we're just talking off air. May's just around the corner, and um, we've got a final series that's going to be coming up. It's going to be really exciting. Mm. There were a few games midweek though um, that we wanted to touch on very quickly before we moved into the weekend's action. Um, in those two particular games, one of them was the um, was the actual Western Sydney Wanderers versus the uh, Newcastle Jets. Now we sort of spoke about this one, and Lockie, you got the score right just the other way around. You, yeah. you said three two to the Jets. Um, but a surprising first half for the Wanderers, um, and as usual, they they try to bottle it. But this time, oh. they walk they walk away with three points. Um, what were your thoughts on that game? Oh, it, it was so much fun. Honestly, as a neutral, I mean, I know you being a Wanderers fan, it would have been really nervy in that second half. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I expected a, a high scoring game, and we got that. And and Wanderers were really impressive, especially in that first half. Like in attack, we're looking good, and 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 we're. Not just like creating the chances, which which they have done, you know, through many games this season, but like taking their chances, which was the difference in this game and three 0 up. But uh, of course, in classic Western City Wanderers fashion, they almost bottled it. Uh, it it's it, it shows that it shows that they have grown. The fact that they were able to hold on and claim the three points. Newcastle, though, just from a Jets point of view, if if anything, mm. that, like Newcastle, were, I thought was so poor in that first half. Um, Wanderers, I thought, did a pretty good job of nullifying Daniel Pena. He was really quiet this game. But for a game that I think I said in last week's show that like this was the game for Newcastle that they had to win. And I, and I was like, they're going to come out firing. They're going to come out, you know, they're going to be scoring goals. But it was just West City Wanderers, especially in that first half, who just came out and just dominated from, from the get-go. So, uh, look, ultimately disappointing from a Newcastle Jets point of view, but credit to West City Wanderers to, to hold on for the win. That's the positive for them, even though their season might be over. Yeah, mate, and um, you know we sort of we sort of that was our prediction that Newcastle was going to come out strong, mm. and it was very surprising to see the Wanderers, you know, really put put them to the sword pretty early. And even even in saying that, they had two goals disallowed as well for a couple of offsides. So um, and, and they were both for Rodwell. Uh, funnily enough, mm. um, Rodwell, you know, putting in a header off the back of a shot, and then in his second one, um, Keanu Bacchus was offside from the original uh, cross into. The box, but it could have been a four or five, an extension to the lead, and then all of a sudden, you know, you get the Jets pull one back. That second one, Margush again, you know, jumps up for the ball. Nobody, you know, even if there was contact, it was minimal at best. Mm. Drops the ball, they put it in the back of the net, and you, like you said, nervy for a Wanderers fan because you're like. Is this seriously going to go to three all? Like, and yeah. and as a Wanderers fan, you're thinking this is going to end three all. It is going to end three all, um, and especially with about 15 minutes to go. You know, normally when the team comes back from three nil down to three two, that they, they find themselves that third goal. Um, but you, you know, they, they held on um, nonetheless. Again, scrappy, I think, from the Wanderers. They pick up the points, and what could have been if they didn't drop the points against Brisbane? Um, and they didn't drop the points against. I can't remember who they played the week before. Against Mariners. Uh, Mariners. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's mm. right. The late, the late equalizer, um, mate, and the extra four points. Um, I know. Obviously, they they lose to um, Wellington on the weekend, which we'll get into in a second. But what could have been, what could have been mathematically, um, wasn't meant to be. And I think, as you said, this was the game for Newcastle line through them now uh, that they're, they're not making the finals. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I agree. It's, it's, it's a tough one, but um, 
look, you know, it's it was again, it was it was one of those games you just didn't know what you're going to make of it, and you know the way it panned out led led to some you know interesting results for the rest of the week, which we'll which we'll get into now. Uh, there was a Friday night game, uh, Macarthur and those cowbells, mate. They're getting on my nerves. <laughs> uh, but Macarthur versus Melbourne victory um, for me, yeah. You know what? Like, I did mention the cowbells, mate. When they when they ring those things, oh my god, it makes some <laughs> noise, and it remind me of the World Cup with the Vuvuzelas. Ah, uh, yeah. Just like, 2010. I was just, man, I can't uh. do this. I can't go to a MacArthur game. But no, but nonetheless, um, they made it interesting. They, they made it interesting. They had a few chances, MacArthur. I know the 4-1 result doesn't really talk to, um, I guess, their attacking prowess, but they did have chances to actually, you know, put some away. And you know what? Um, Melbourne victory were just too strong. Yeah, Absolutely. Like uh, this was, this was Melbourne victory at their best in this game in attack. I mean, it could have been more. They had so many great chances. Philip Curter, the MacArthur goalkeeper, had had to make some great saves. Um, but it, it was a really interesting point. I can't remember wh- what minute it was in the second half. It, w- it must have been around the hour mark or maybe just after that, where I think MacArthur scored a second goal, then had it ruled out. I think by VAR. So yeah. that that would that would have changed the game at two two. And and for a bull side who had to win to maintain their pl- place in the top six, and as we'll talk about the F3 Derby in second, that then MacArthur have now dropped out. Like at, at two, two, I was backing MacArthur to go from there. Cause I was, cause you know, just fighting for that final spot. They could have held on better victory. Just clinical in the end, had the quality. Jake Brimmer was fantastic. Ben Falami great off the wing once again. Um, and, and a big result to keep Melbourne victories, uh, top two hopes alive, which they're absolutely still in a shout with after their result. Our other game this weekend, which we'll talk about later against Brisbane. I think they're out of, they can't mathematically t- uh, finish first, but still the top a top two finishes, uh, you know, gives them a week off in the final. So, look, Melbourne victory. They were cl- they were class in this game, and and yet again, disappointment from Macarthur FC, who looks like I mean, with the way it's looking, I think they'll miss out in finals now, Macarthur. <laughs> Yeah, look, the, the the ladder is definitely taking shape. And and you mentioned the two guys earlier, Falami and Brimmer, um, and, and, you know, great goals from both of them. Falami, you know, the scraps just on sort of edge of the box, pop, pops it into that le- bottom left corner. Brimmer obviously putting away the penalty. And you know what? I, I get back to those cowbells. It's tough, man. Like, it's just so much noise and it's just... Um, it creates a little bit of the hostile atmosphere, but we spoke about it last week. MacArthur don't have a big crowd. Imagine imagine a full crowd with those cowbells. That would be absolutely, you know, pressure. But Miranda, Miranda's sort of, I don't know how to describe it, his back heel flick goal. Um, so I guess that, that, that summed it up, right? That summed up that evening for, for MacArthur and, and literally pushed him out of the top six. Um, amazing goal, Miranda, and that Brillante goal. Um, I mean, the slowest goal in the A League. I couldn't see the ball move any slower, and through that many bodies. Um, but nonetheless, they were too strong. They were just too strong, Melbourne. And um, I know you said mathematically. Mathematically, they can still take top spot, but it'll be pretty tough. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're, they're four. They're four points off City. Um, and they're both on 24, so they'll play two more games unless City lose both and obviously Melbourne win both. That's It's going to be a tough one. But Western United have three games. So technically, Western United win all three. Um, they take out the Premiership, which is which is going to be interesting um, considering there's only three games or, and two games to go. But victory too strong in that one. I'm, I'm rushing through this because I just want to get to this to this derby, the F3 derby. Ah, <laughs> uh, um, yes. Some, some are calling it the best match in the A-League this season. Um, you know, I know you were there, Lockie. It would have been a cracker atmosphere in true New South Wales fashion, pissing down rain um, at, at, at points, you know. Um, but, look, I'll, I'll let you take over here because I did predict a 3 nil for the Mariners mm. and it was 3-0 after 33 minutes. Like, what was going through your head? Oh mate, it was it was ecstasy, and 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 just just a quick shout out to the Mariners fans in the away bay. I mean, one of the best away days from a Mariners uh, fan point of view. 
the the amount of noise that that cr- we created was 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 something that I mean for Mariners a team who who for years have been ridiculed for having a low supporter base uh, we showed up here in numbers and 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 made some real noise and a lot of the players after the game Mariners play saying it felt like a home game because you know three nil up in that first half. Against your rivals, I mean, it's it, yeah, it was, it was just an incredible situation. Second half, it got really nervy, and you know, Lucas Moragas <laughs> with the Jets put put in that one literally within seconds of the, in in the second half, and and then the, and then the own goal, for Jacob Farrell, just absolutely uh, look, just a low moment for Jacob Farrell. Unfortunately, yeah. the young guy still learning, and uh, look from there, it was nervy, and then <clears throat> late on. The moment with the uh, the incident in the in the penalty area, and and I just want to say, I mean, I want to try and stay unbiased, but I can totally see why people think it is soft and 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 potentially not a penalty. And I'd love to hear your your thoughts, KG, about it, whether it was a penalty or not. But I think, I mean, at the end of the day, you run the risk if there's hands, you know, in contact with another player, and and not only was it, you know, in, it looks like he was pushing another player, but it was a player who was going to. Kyrolls was going to head that ball clear. You know, Kyrolls he get, he goes down, gets taken out of the contest, and and can't head that ball clear. And Jet scored that third. Well, the the, the goal that was en- eventually ruled out in the end. But uh, well, credit to the Mariners for holding on uh, for another massive three points, and 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 quick shout out as well to Garen Kowal, another Kowal who came on late, scored yet again for the Mariners. Uh, the scenes in the away bay were pumping at right at the end. There it was it was awesome. Yeah. I could only imagine, and and it confused me because it didn't look like the other qual. Yeah, and I'm like, hang on, there's another one. There's, yeah. There's a, yeah. So, um, look, go, going back to a couple of things in the match, the two goals you conceded. Um, you know, I watched a replay of this match, and I thought, you know, Barry Giddy could have been held accountable for for at least the first one. The first one was a cross that he could have caught. It went went straight over him in a six yard. Um, box, which I think he could have extended his arms and, and mm. got to it. I think it was very soft from him. The second one, he sort of hesitated. He came out, went back, um, and then you can see that goal. So maybe something to to look at there for the coaching staff and the and the goalkeeping ranks. I, I thought one of them should have at least been stopped. Um, and look, their penalty. It's almost, you know how we have these conversations where they say sometimes um, you, you're denying a goal scoring opportunity when when somebody creates a foul, a defender creates a foul for a striker. This is almost the reverse. You're you're almost denying them an opportunity to stop a goal scoring opportunity. So mm. whether it is um, and and I totally personally I think it is a pen. Uh, sorry, I, I think it is a free kick. Um, as soft as it is, you have your hands in the guy's back. Um, and whether or not he gets to the ball, what he'll actually do is obstruct. So even if he doesn't head the ball away, the fact that you've pushed him out of the way doesn't allow mm-hmm. him to make your job more difficult to score. Yep. So I think that's from that angle. And, and look, yeah, look, are they soft? They are soft, but I've seen softer. I've seen yep. soft, depend, uh, you know, um, free kicks given away in the box. Um, and, you know, happens to goalkeepers are a protected species. So, look, overall, I think um, harsh, harsh in, from a football fan perspective because goes to three all and what mm. a game it would have ended up being. It, it was still a cracker game, but a three all would have changed a lot of things. But I still think it was a foul, um, you know, whether he gets there or not irrelevant and you know what um I, I sort of told you hey we're gonna go the whole way we're gonna go the whole way the mariners um <laughs> and, and i was ha- and i was happy to see i was happy to see the victory um interested to hear your thoughts on daniel pena's red card ah oh, mate i mean from from what i've seen i, I was just shocked i i, I was just I, in the stadium i didn't realize what had gone on uh, there, mm. there was just an, it went on for a couple of minutes and it was just every player was involved almost the benches were getting on onto the field um, and then we saw on the on the on the on the big screen what it what it went on and 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 i'm just i, I i'm just, i'm just dumbfounded I, I don't think i've ever seen that he intentionally 
approaches another play with his elbow to the head. It's mm. it, it's so bizarre, and it's such a and like it, like it's an opposition player, and and I almost feel sympath- sympathetic towards him, mainly because like from a neutral point of view, I, I guess if you take from a neutral point of view, Daniel Pena has been so good to watch, and he's been like one mm. of the league's best players. And this act for me has almost I don't want to go as far as saying it has done, but it's almost undone all that work. Because he's been such a good player. A bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he's he's been so entertaining. He's got so much flair, and and to, just to lose his mind completely and do th- and do that. And you saw him afterwards. He, I remember just afterwards he was being sort of uh, spoken to by Marco Reni in a very calm manner. Manner, mm-hmm. and he was like away from the group and just like talking to him. And he sort of knew. I think Daniel Penn knew. Is like, oh, what have yeah. I done? Sort of thing. <laughs> Um, and then there was a, I do, I do want to mention as well. There was a, I think, I think it was caught on the broadcast of, uh, Matt Simon, who of course was injured, uh, just standing by the tunnel, had a, had a little word to Daniel Pena, which, uh, which as a Mariners fan, I absolutely loved. Not only that, but as a, as a, you know, Matty Simon, uh, fan, you, you would know he's probably done 10 times worse, but, <laughs> yeah, but he, he, and he knows how to rile up a, an opposition oh, defender. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's done that pretty well. Uh, but definitely out of character for, for Daniel Pena. I thought that was, I thought, you know, when I saw it happen, it was it was almost like it wasn't even like a, a swinging elbow. It was sort of like a shrug. Like he got his mm. elbow in the guy's face and sort of, you know, um, jolted him. And I, uh, you know, regardless, it's a red card, right? You make mm. that yeah. you make that kind of contact with the elbow or with your arm, forearm, whatever it may be. You're going to see red. But you know what I what I'm sort of disappointed in is is you know he now misses matches, right? He now right. misses matches. Um, had the scenario been a little bit different where they were still in, in hopes of playoffs, what would they have done? Because you miss him for a couple of games, you might not make it, but irrelevant now. We, we know that Newcastle's uh, not, not going to be in that, in that I'll get top echelon of the top six to be able to play, but unlucky, but good result. Central Coast, you know, um, now in fifth or sixth, just got to check. See, yeah, it was fifth, and then after Wellington one, we dropped down uh, to sixth. Yes. So yeah, still yeah. very tight at the moment. That's all right. That's all right. You know, we're we're, we're riding this wave. <laughs> we're going to ride it all the way. But um, there was uh, moving moving into the other weekend uh, games. There was the Wellington Phoenix playing the Western Sydney Wanderers. Um, now this one. I did, a, a, I guess, a, a live uh, watch-along with the boys from RBTV, so shout-out to them. It was the most frustrating game I've seen in a long time mm-hmm. from the West Sydney Wanderers, especially off the back of what happened midweek. Um, a game of two halves. Wellington totally dominated the first half. Wanderers couldn't get the ball. Um, it was just frustrating. And then Mark Rudin at halftime breaks the whiteboard from frustration. He goes out there and tells them to to you know press and dominate possession. They do that, hit the post a number of different times, um, and we'll just highlight this point: the Steven Ugargovic penalty miss was absolutely the worst penalty I've seen. Oh, and yeah. and I don't even compare it to John Terry 2008 Champions League because <laughs> his one his one at least hit the post. This one was nowhere near. I feel sorry for him. But there was an issue all game with players' footing. Everyone kept slipping around. Um, you think maybe a little bit more care um, in taking the penalty and missing that chance changed the game for us. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's it's a similar thing to what uh, to what we spoke to in the MacArthur game, where like a goal completely changes the contest, and the goal was the only thing missing from the performance for the Wanderers. I thought, you know, they they had so much possession and so much so much of the field too. Like they they, they were really boxing Wellington in, and 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 watching that game, I was I was really interested with watching West Sydney Wanderers because yeah, I'm trying to figure out what's because honestly, from my point of view, they haven't been like that bad. You know, when we look at, I think Brisbane Raw have been pretty poor for large parts of the season. Perth Glory have been mm. atrocious. Um, West Sydney Wanderers haven't been that bad in, in in my opinion. And I was trying to think what 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 is it for West Sydney Wanderers that's actually going wrong here? And I think it it came down to in the end, and it goes to show. I think they had 20 shots. But they only had something like three or four on target, and and yeah. and they're just they're lacking that player. Like they've got great they've, they've got great midfielders. They had Jack Rodwell, Keanu Backer, Stephen Ugarkovic on the field, James Troisi. But they're lacking that attacking player who has that cutting edge, has that ability to 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 take a player on to get into a box and create an actual dangerous opportunity because that's what they failed to do. They actually 
fail to actually like get inside. I mean, I know they hit, hit the crossbar a couple of times, but they just didn't have that player just to get in behind that. I know Rami Najarine can do that at times, but for me, that's what we're seeing. That's the kind of play we're seeing Wanderers have to get for next season. And we've seen other teams have, have had those players. Daniel Pena at the Jets has, has been that player. Uh, at the Mariners, uh, bringing in Benny and Cololo and Jason Cummings, those guys create and score goals. West of Sydney Wanderers have so many good, hardworking players, and defensively they're pretty solid, but need that. Just, it just It's just going to take one player, and I don't know who it is. They thought it would be Dim- Dimitri Petritas. It wasn't. Uh, Terry no. Antonis, no, but... Uh, yeah, I can totally understand the frustration of Western Wanderers fans. And this was just a gritty 1-0 win for Wellington, which uh, keeps them in the race for, for the top six. So credit to Phoenix for the three points as well. Yeah, look, they really toughed it out, the Phoenix. They they literally spent the last, well, the, the whole second half, they were defending. Um, yeah. it, was, it was 10 men behind the ball at all times um, and trying to, I guess, not allow us the Sydney Wanderers to get in behind them. Um, and, and you touched on a few guys. So Dimitri Pat- Petrados didn't even make the trip over there. Um, Bernie Abini didn't make the trip over there. They start the match without Tom Hammond. They start Terry and Turnus up top. Uh, so it was, it was a different game plan. Don't really know if they were trying to, whether it was they were trying to make some room for Jack Rodwell um, uh, alongside your um, your Yugagovic, your Keanu Bacchus, um, and then like Troisi. Like, okay, so how do we make this work? So they take off the one striker that they've actually brought over to New Zealand um, and too little too late for, for him to be be able to do anything. But you just you just look and you're like, even even um, in the podcast that we did yesterday, um, or the watch along, I should say, you know, with minutes to go, they, they take off a midfielder and they put on Tass Murakutis, who's generally a centre-back, who can play CDM, but really wasn't needed. You needed somebody else, maybe a Jared Carluccio who comes on, you know, an attacking type player. Um, that Terry and Turnus on the bench. It was just, a sh- I think, it was just a shambles, and they couldn't work out how to get the result. And and to your point, we haven't been really that bad, but bad enough not be not to be able to take our chances, um, as we mentioned earlier about a couple of draws and, and other results. Um, and yes, full credit to to Wellington. You know they stuck it out. It, it's gonna it's gonna show other teams that finish in the six that you know what if they lock down if they bunker down they get one early, they might be able to get the job done. Mm, absolutely, yeah. And Wellington they're becoming the kings of that at the moment. I think. Yeah, they're they're, they're looking strong and earned their place in the in the six for now anyway. Um, but we move on. There was the uh, match in the afternoon. It was Adelaide United and versus Perth Glory. Wasn't quite the shellacking that we predicted. Uh, the six nil and three nil that we <laughs> that we sort of um, put on the books. But it was, I think, overall it was a it was a dominated game by Adelaide. They probably could have had three or four more. Perth with uh, a disallowed goal towards the end um, of the match, but really didn't show too much other than that. Um, you know what? Adelaide just got the job done and and picked up the three points. That I, I'm going to try and I think it's Irun Kunda. Is yes, the surname? Yeah, Irun Kunda. Yeah. My God, that cross cross uh, cross goal top bins. Banger. Jeez, man. That was if you wanna if you're up one nil and you want to seal the game in the ninety fourth minute, that's how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And and it was funny too, because he tried it a few times before that, some long range strikes, and they kept kept going way over the bar. And I kept thinking, what is he doing? What's he doing? And then he shows up at the end. And dude, what a goal. Like to, to hit it with such velocity and such accuracy. He he got it literally in the corner there. He couldn't, it was, it, it, there's no way keepers stopping that. He's an absolute freak of a goal. And uh, yeah, as, as you said, I mean, just the narrative for this game is, is pretty simple. Adelaide just getting the job done. I guess credit to Perth Glory. They, they put up a bit more of a fight in this game, I thought, compared to other games. And that probably does go down to, and I think this was raised in, in commentary for the game, the fact that this was the first time, I think, in, in like in weeks, that Perth Glory actually had like a week to prepare. They didn't have any midweek games. And I think that showed. They, they 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 were able to get, you know, as they as as they've said, some training sessions in midweek. Uh, I think they had a couple more senior players back. Nick Nick Fitzgerald was back in the lineup for them. So, look, they were like there were slight improvement, but still, I mean, nowhere near the the quality of Adelaide United. And uh, it, yeah, it would have been really interesting had that 
had that disallowed goal stood. Obviously, I think it was offside. I think it was uh, Anasmo for, for Glory, the young striker, who almost would have made it 1-1 and would have made it really interesting, especially for the context of the top six, especially me being a Mariners fan. I would have loved for Adelaide to lose so we could try and leapfrog over them. But Or, or even yeah. the draw, right, just to get them a little mm. bit closer, right? Uh, th- th- if they drop any points, it would have been pretty good for them. But again, a, a weak squad going over there. They, they did have a chance... Uh, just before full time, oh, it was like 92nd minute, possibly, that mm. they had a chance. And Zadkovic got off his chair. I think it was um, oh, Gilroy. Is it Burke Gilroy? Oh, yeah, Burke Gilroy, yeah. He had the chance, and I was like, oh, okay, you know, it's still not over here. And then mm. they, yeah, they go down the other end, um, an amazing finish uh, for the young lad. And, and I, you know, I'd argue probably one of the best strikes of the season. But I, honest, honestly, it's it's it certainly is up there. It's it, it was so sweetly hit for sure. We've 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 got some goal goal of the year contenders. Oh, yeah. um, well, we've got a match of the year, which is the F three derby, and then we've got a goal <laughs> of the year here. Um, it's looking really interesting. Mm. But um, this evening, because we're obviously recording on a Monday um, night, we've had the Brisbane Raw pick up a draw against Melbourne Victory. Um, a one all. Um, now this this was interesting. Um, a good result. Well, a good result for Brisbane in picking up some because they've been playing well. We've touched on it last couple of weeks, um, but a poor one for Victory. Um, really, an opportunity for them to. They would have gone tied with Western United at the top. Um, you know what? They've they've you know the the games are catching up with them possibly. Hmm. I think so. I think so. And and I think I think at the end of the, at the end of the day for victory in this game, it was a case of the short turnaround. Because as as we were just talking about a few moments ago, they played Friday, played Friday, fly to Brisbane, play Monday. They they rotated the squad a little bit, but uh, Brisbane Raw were on top for much of this game, and they almost won it. They had they had plenty of good chances. Looking at the stats, I think that eighteen shots and only two on target. So and and again, that has been the story of the season for for a lot of those teams at the bottom of the ladder where, yeah, they'll look good at times, but they simply just don't have the quality to finish off the chances. And that's what's costing those teams who were missing out on finals this year. So, um, but Brisbane Raw, this was a day for the youngsters. Alex Parsons got on the score sheet. Uh, Eli Adams, everyone keep an eye out for Eli Adams. This, this youngster, it was his first start. He's come off the bench the last couple of weeks. And and he, he was so good this game. He's so lively, um, pretty pretty tall for a winger too, and just loves taking players on. He was great. Henry Hoare's been fantastic this season. Look, classic victory to, to, to hang in and, and, and grab the equaliser. But um, yeah, it might be tough for them to, to finish first now. Yeah, I mean, look, just just class from a victory perspective to to stay in the match, and and obviously from you know what Brisbane good on them, like put up a fight. You know that they're not gonna, you know they're not gonna go down without a fight. Um, it is just looking at the ladder. It is mathematically mathematically impossible um, for some of these sides like Brisbane, if they even if they won their last three, they're they're well short of um, Central Coast. West of Sydney and Newcastle, it's, you know, it's, it's, they have to win all three of their, all last of their three games. Yeah. And then Central Coast will have to lose everything. It's, it's pretty much riding on the wall type thing. Um, I know mathematically you can't say it's over till it's over, but it's pretty much over for those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, look, interesting results. Now I'm just trying to pull up our fixtures because this week is um, again. <laughs> there's going to be some matches here that are going to talk to like Melbourne Victory turning it around again. So they're playing this Friday, and they're up against Wellington Phoenix. Um, this is at Amy Park. If we went into some predictions here, Lockie, uh, what are your thoughts on this one? Victory versus the Phoenix. Uh, this would be a really fun game to watch because, because again, Wellington, who have been, you know, had plenty of good games this season, could get a result here. But I think this should be another case of victory being too strong. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Th- no, nah, actually, I'll tell you what. I'll go three-one victory. Three-one victory. Okay. Um, look, I'm I'm probably gonna go a two-nil. Um, I just think sorry, two-nil to victory. I just think they're gonna they're gonna want to get the job done, um, and Wellington. You know they, they can score, but they didn't really show much against the Wanderers, which which is probably the first time that I've really really concentrated on Wellington Phoenix attack. Um, I, I don't I don't see them getting the points there. Melbourne victory, hopefully to do you guys a favour because you got you've got a tough one on Saturday um, at home to Western United, who are obviously fighting for that top two or even 
top spot finish and they've got a couple of games. So if victory pick up points on a Friday, they're going to be hungry to get some off you guys. Mm, yes, yes. And <clears throat> I'll be cautious again in this game. Oh, mate. I, 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 want, I desperately want to back us for a win. And, and, I, and I think I will just off the last couple of weeks for Mariners. I mean, four goals scored in our last, you know, across the last two games, you know, four against Wellington, four against Jets. It will be close though. I'm going to go 2-1 Mariners, Cummings to get a late winner. Alrighty, alrighty. So look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ride the train. We're going with the Mariners, okay? <laughs> I love it. But I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be one of those high-scoring games. Um, mm. I just maybe, uh, I'm gonna go a three-two. I'm gonna go a three-two. So we'll be wide by one, but a three-two. Hopefully, you'll enjoy it. Um, don't know if you'll go three-nil up, but we'll, we'll see how it pans <laughs> out. Um, after that, the the biggest dead rubber game you can find. This weekend, Perth Glory versus Swiss Sydney Wanderers. Um, both teams, you know, so I think Perth is now confirmed that they're wooden spooners. Uh, I don't think mathematically they can get out of it. Um, a case of some players just play for maybe contracts or for experience. Um, it'll be interesting to see who Rudin takes over there. What are your thoughts? Uh, West Sydney Wanderers should win this game. They should. Uh, they've, they've got a better side. Uh, despite the weaknesses that we talked about earlier in the episode, uh, they've, they've got a better side than Perth Glory. And if this West Sydney Wanderers squad can't defeat this very young and ex- inexperienced Perth Glory squad, then uh, they are, uh, there are indeed some serious problems if they're not already are at West Sydney Wanderers. So I'm going to go for 2 1 Wanderers. I'm going to go three one Wanderers. Um, it's just score score line I like to see from from the boys. So hopefully we go out there and pick up some um, some goals. But I'm sure we're going to give Perth Glory a sniff. If there's anyone that's going to give Perth Glory a sniff, will be us. So yeah. they'll they'll get one on the board. Saturday night uh, finishes up with Adelaide versus Brisbane. Um, not so easy to call this one. If if we look back maybe a month or so ago, you'd say Adelaide, uh, but with Brisbane on in form, what are you thinking? I think this could be a really high-scoring game. I'm going to go. Actually, I tell you what, I'm going to go two-two, and 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 Adelaide will be disappointed with that result. But Adelaide, at times, I mean, yes, they did get the win against Glory, but at times haven't like they haven't had the best home form. There's been pretty mixed for them so far this season. And and Brisbane, as I mentioned, it performed really well against Victory. I think there's a lot of positives about the way they're playing at the moment, even though they're not in the race for top six at all. Two-two, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a fun game. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right. It's, you know, they haven't been they haven't been the finished product at a, at any time this season, Adelaide. Like they haven't been that team where you, you could easily predict their games because you just don't know what, what you're going to get out of them. Not as bad as uh, like the MacArthur's and things like that, but they just they've done enough to find themselves where they are, um, and they struggled at the start of the season. Um, I'll join you. I'll go with a draw. Um, I'll go two two as well. I'll join in with, with I'll, I'll join in with you, Lockie. We'll see um, how that one pans out. Sunday, first of May, we got Macarthur at home to Newcastle Jets. Um, what are your thoughts here? Hmm. Ah. Uh, well, after defeating Mariners, seeing, seeing my Mariners defeat Jets uh, on the weekend, I'd love to see Jets get to get a win here to keep Macarthur FC out of the top six. Oh, this will be a really fascinating game. Whether Newcastle, I think Newcastle after the, their last two defeats they are going to be really deflated. So I think I think Bulls actually might get up for a win in this game. I think MacArthur get it two one. Okay, that's interesting. Um, look, in true yo yo form, I think MacArthur pick up the win here um, mm. just to make things a little bit interesting, so we can go into the final two weeks without cementing that top six. Uh, it, w- it will be interesting to see how, how both teams perform. Um, you know, do Newcastle still have a feeling that they could potentially mathematically make it? Because if, you know, obviously if Central Coast lose um, and Wellington lose, you know, they might think, oh, and they pick up a win against uh, MacArthur, they, mm. they potentially pick up points where everybody else drops them. Do they think that they can still make the finals? That'll be an interesting one. Um, and I've just noticed no Melbourne City game again. Um, mm. So it looks like it's a while between drinks for them um, and they're going to be fresh for their next one. Obviously, they've got UCL commitments, um, which they're uh, – sorry, not UCL, ACL. <laughs> they're not, not, not quite in Europe yet. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, so they've got ACL commitments, but still no game for them. Uh, and I've just been trying to scroll through some of the matches um, 
and, and it's a while between drinks for them. Mm-hmm. And, and I've just noticed next weekend there's a big blue. Uh, yeah. That'll be very interesting. So we'll, we'll jump. Oh, and, and an F3 derby again. Another so one. Both on the same night. But we'll cover that on next week's episode. Um, it's it's really, like you said, it's really heating up, Lockie. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how all these teams come out of it. Should we should our predictions come true? We see Mariners jump up a place, hopefully into fifth, and start securing that place. Um, and then you know, for my Western Sydney Wanderers, it's you know, let's see let's see what Rudin's going to do. He's probably going to eye out a few players, see if they get a contract for next season. There's something like 14 players that are off contract. Mm. Um, one of them being Jack Rodwell, uh, both of our strikers, Hemet and Avini, they're, they're both off contract as well. Uh, so there's there's some big names. Actually, both of our goalkeepers as well are off contract. So, you know, um, if, if if you had to pick one person to, to join the Western Sydney Wanderers for next season, who do you, who do you think it would be? That's a great question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great question. I'm trying to think of maybe if there's some players at some other clubs that maybe aren't quite getting much of a look in. I know at Melbourne Victory, I mean, they've got such a stacked squad. And when you look at Melbourne City as well, a player that comes to mind is, and this is maybe a bit of a bold take because this could work out or, or it could be terrible, but Stefan Kolakowski, who, I mean, he played in the A-League Grand Final last season, hasn't been getting much of a look in at, at, at Melbourne City. A young striker like that, I mean, think about when it's sort of similar to when Marco Tilia went from Sydney FC to Melbourne City, and now he's playing for the Socceroos. Could be a similar mm. thing with, with Stefan Kolakowski, maybe going to West Sydney Wanderers to get more game time. So, you know, that's just a random, you know, random idea for West Sydney Wanderers. As I mentioned before, I think they need that that key attacking player to uh, to really do something different for them next season because they need, they desperately need that Wanderers. Yeah, well, I've, I've heard a bit of a I've heard a bit of a rumor um, about Steven Ugarovic um, possibly signing for Sydney FC, and mm. when I think about when I think about that, they've they've obviously uh, signed um, Mustafa Amini. Uh, they've had a young fella in Yazbek um, really make an impact this season in that midfield for them, and I believe Amini was only a replacement for was it Oh, Bratton, Bratton, sorry, yeah. Bratton, mm. Bratton. I knew it was a B. Um, so, so what ha- what happens there? Maybe uh, you know, maybe West Sydney Wanderers might want to do a bit of a trade. And if 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 Ugarovic mm. really wants to go the other way, do we pick one up from Sydney FC? It's Although not a bad it's, idea. It's frowned upon, but it's it's not a bad idea. We'll we'll see how that goes. If if you had a player that you wanted to join Central Coast or an area where you think you need to strengthen, uh, where would it be? Well, at, at the moment, the starting squad is looking so good at the moment, so I'm happy with that. So it was really, especially when it comes to feeling at the depth, I think I think from Marin's point of view, in, in defense, is, is especially centre-back, is a position that we need to look at uh, bringing in. I know that we've been rumoured with, uh, speaking of rumours, Thomas Aquilina, Wanderers player, linked with mm-hmm. uh, Central Coast Mariners, with, with Lewis Miller linked to, to MacArthur FC. So already the, the transfer merry, merry-go-round is, is, is started for next season. But look, I'd love to see another central defender join the Central Coast Mariners, you know, potentially Ruin Tongik, who hasn't got that much game time, might be departing this season. So, you know, whether we do pick up someone like, uh, I, I even don't mind some of the centre backs at West Sydney Wanderers. I think I think Philip Kankar is fantastic. Um, I think I think Mark uh, Mark Natter. I know I know he hasn't got that much game time mm-hmm. this season, but again, like Marin is uh, are so great at bringing in these young players and turning them into really class players. So, especially wouldn't take back wouldn't take Ziggy Gordon back. No, not, nah. not, after, not after the way he left us. No. Yeah, no, fair enough. I thought I thought I'd push the buttons there, <laughs> uh, but it's look. It's been it's been another good episode, Lockie. I really appreciate it. Um, just a chance for you to plug your socials for sure. Coast Watch Football across the social media platforms and on YouTube. Uh, just recently this weekend, put up a vlog of the F3 Derby on Saturday night. It is a must watch. Uh, plenty of noise from the away bay. Go check it out. Please do. And if you haven't liked, shared, or subscribed, uh, go and check out Lockie's content. And obviously, um, you know, everyone here at the Football Capital. Lockie, thanks again. And uh, we'll do it all again next week. Cheers. Cheers, mate.